Okay, in this video we're going to start doing some coding of this uh, of this GUI. So we're going to start with the initialization. This this video is going to be about the initialization before anything happens, before uh, the GUI actually opens up or is shown to you. So I'm going to label this initialization section here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to clear everything. I want to do the equivalent of clear all, which clears all the variables in the workspace, and then CLC, which clears this command window. So we need to evaluate these into the base workspace. So I'm just going to evaluate in the string clear all and evaluate in the string CLC. And that'll clear everything and clear the command window. And then the, what we need to do is we need to, uh, when I open this up, I want to make sure that these are already set um, so that I don't need to click in here and then press enter, click in here and press enter to set these values. So I want to make sure that these are already uh, initialized before this GUI actually opens up. So we're going to code up these uh, variables in here. So the first one uh, that I want to put in here is type NACA, and that's the default airfoil, and that is a 0012 from here. And then the next one I want to do is angle of attack, which is 0, grid points, which is 100, pop grid type. These are all variables that I'm making up right now, um, but you can see how they correspond essentially to these here. Uh, so pop grid type means that we're using the first of the two. So there's uniform and non-uniform. Pop grid type 1 is uniform, corresponds to uniform. Um, pop trailing edge is 1. Again, we're using the open as opposed to closed. The pop plot as is equal to 1. So we're using uh, line as opposed to circle or dot. Uh, pop save type is 1. So we're using leading edge to trailing edge as opposed to trailing edge to leading edge. And then uh, radio show camber line is equal to 0. This is 0 because this is deselected, so by default we are not plotting the camber line. And then the save file name, I'm saving it to naca.txt like that, because that's what's shown here. So these should all correspond with what's shown here, otherwise it's going to be very confusing for the user or you when you start it up and these values are different than what you actually set in here. Uh, another thing that I want to do then, now that I have these in here, you can see that they're all outlined in orange because they're it might be unused, so we want to assign these into the base workspace. So this might get boring, I might cut this out of the video, um, but I'm just going to code this in here. So, actually, I'll just copy these in because I already have them. Okay, so just two things to note is that I, I copied this in from my other file, and I changed this variable from radio show camber line to just radio show camber, and then I also changed this save file name from a capital N here to a lowercase n. And this is all, these are all now assigned into the base workspace, so when we run this, if we run this right now, uh, let's see, uh, flag plot, yeah, because I didn't actually initialize that one, so the first one that I want here, or the last one that I want here is flag plot. And this is just a flag that indicates whether or not you can plot. And the reason that I have this in here is because uh, if you set an airfoil that's not four digits, so let's say I, I input something that's five digits, it's going to try to plot it, but it won't be able to extract the right information, so it's going to do something weird and there's going to be errors happening. So I put in this flag plot um, flag that says if it's one, then you can plot. If it's not one, if it ends up being zero, uh, then then the plot airfoil button won't actually do anything and you'll have to it'll show something in in here in this status that'll say oh change this to four digits as opposed to whatever you had so i just have that in here and let me just really quick assign this into the base workspace it's flag plot flag plot now when we run it you can see they all show up here with their variables okay the next thing i want to do is i want to Disable the save button, 
because it's no use trying to save data that's not there yet. So we will enable this after we've plotted the airfoil. So I'm just going to um, disable, so that it was called push save data, and I'm going to change it from enable, and I'm going to change it to off. And then the next thing I want to do, the last thing I want to do, is just plot the titles and axes for the uh, for the plot. So I'm going to select the correct axes. So that's plot airfoil. That's the tag that we were using. And then I'm going to change the title to airfoil plot. I'm going to change the x label to x distance, and then the y label to y distance, like that. And now when we run this. To open up, now we have the title, the y, uh, y axis, the x axis is there, but since I have poor formatting right now, it is stuck underneath these buttons here. So if I move these down, maybe if I move this down a little bit, and then I can just select all these buttons, shift it down, save, come back here, run it again, there you go, now it shows up. And now all these variables are in the workspace here. Alright, so thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one.